All right then, gang. So in the last video, we saw that if we added a new recipe or new page, if you like, to Contentful, and then we came to the home page and refreshed, it would trigger the rebuild of this home page. So the next time we refreshed, it would show that data right here. This is incremental static regeneration at play. However, when we click on this and we go to the new slug for that recipe, well, it doesn't show this even when we refresh. So Next.js is not building this new page. Incremental static regeneration is for the regeneration of existing pages, not necessarily new pages, unless we implement something called a fallback page, which we're going to talk about now. So fallback pages are basically placeholder content whilst Next.js fetches new data for the page. So say, for example, we visit a new recipe page that we just created on Contentful, for example, forward slash recipes, forward slash my new meal. Now, to begin with, we don't have that page built. So instead, we should get a fallback page, not a 404 page, a fallback page, which could be some kind of skeleton component or layout like this. Then in the background, Next.js is going to go out and try and fetch the data for this new page. So once the data is fetched, Next.js pumps it into the page component that we're seeing in the browser so that the page can be rendered in real time. So we might see a loading screen for a second or so. And then when we have the data, it's pumped into the components so we can see it. We don't have to refresh, which is nice. Then in the background, Next.js also generates a new static page for the new recipe so that it's ready for the next visit. So if we go to this URL again, we don't see the fallback page because we already have that static page built on the fly by Next. So let's try adding this functionality into our application. So to implement this, we just have to open up our slug component right here. This is the recipe details page, right? And if we create a new recipe and we go to that slug in the browser, then we want to show a fallback version of this component until we have the data available. Once we have it, then we render it. So the way we do this is by coming up to the get static paths function and we change this fallback property right here in the return object from false to true. Remember when I said before, that this is false, we return a 404 page if this doesn't exist, this page. Well, that's why we were getting that 404 page because the page wasn't built for that new recipe. And because it wasn't built, we return a 404 page. When we set this to true, instead we're saying, no, I don't want you to return a 404 page if that recipe page doesn't exist yet. Instead, what I want you to do is return a fallback version of this component. So try to render this component to the browser essentially. And then once I have the data, I'm going to inject it into this component in the browser so the user can see it. And the way it gets that data is by rerunning this get static props method right here. So it gets that data and pumps the props into the component down here. Now, obviously, when we first go to that new path, the recipe isn't going to exist. So if we try to return all this stuff where we output the recipe, it's not going to work. So what we should do is a little check at the top. So up here, I'm going to say if, and then if we don't have the recipe, so exclamation mark, first of all, then instead I just want to return, for example, a div and say loading or something like that. So if we try to go to a new recipe in the browser forward slash ABC, we don't see this anymore. We see this component and we just see this div right here. Whilst in the background, Next.js is rerunning this to fetch the new data and inject the props into the component, i.e. the recipe. And then once we have that prop, this is not going to be applied anymore. But instead, all this down here is going to be rendered to the browser. Does that make sense? Cool. All right, so we could just return this, but instead what I'd like to do is return some kind of skeleton layout or something like that. So let me create a new component over here called skeleton.js. And then inside here, I'm just going to boilerplate a new React component, RFC, and we don't need the import because we're using a late version of React. And down here inside the div, in fact, first of all, let's give this a class name equal to skeleton like so and then inside this i'm going to do a few divs and each one represents a different piece of content so for example a banner a header some content itself so let's give this a class of s hyphen banner for skeleton banner and then let's do another div below that for the header so div and then 
S hyphen header, like so. And then we'll do another one for the actual content. So div and then S hyphen content. And we'll duplicate that one just a couple of times. Okay, so now we need some styles for this. And to do that, we'll be using style JSX. So let me say style like so, and then place in the JSX attribute. We need our curly braces and template string. I'm just gonna paste in these styles, but they're very simple. We take the skeleton and we say max width 1200 pixels. We give it a bit of margin. Then every div inside that, we give a background of this kind of dark yellow color. It's like a goldy color. And then each one has border radius of four pixels as well, a bit of margin. Then the banner at the top, we give a padding up and down of 12%. The header, we give a padding up and down of 15 pixels, a max width of 500 pixels, and the content a padding up and down of eight pixels and a max width of 1000 pixels. So we have that component. Now we just need to place it over here instead of this div. So skeleton, like so, make sure you spell it correctly, and then import that at the top as well. So import skeleton from and we need to come up out of the recipes, out of the pages, and then into components, and then we want the skeleton file. All right, cool. So I hope this is all gonna work. I'm going to now add all the changes. I'm going to commit them. So git commit M, and we'll say fallback. And then we're gonna push it. So git push origin main, press enter. That's going to push it up to the GitHub repo. When Vassell detects that change in the main branch, it's going to redeploy for us. So if I go back over here, we're going to see it's rebuilding the application now. All right, so now it's done. I'm going to click on that deployment and then I'm going to visit it in the browser. So first of all, if we click on this, it will be there automatically because we've rebuilt the application now and we've already generated this. So this is not the fallback page in action. But what we're going to do is now add in a new recipe. So let's just say DEF after ABC and then add existing media. Let's choose a thumbnail. So this one, avocado, and then let's go to add a featured image, avocado, um, the ingredients doesn't really matter, does it? So DEF again, and then the cooking time, 10 minutes, blah for the method. Very interesting recipe. So we've published that, right? Now, if we go to our deployment over here, I'm going to refresh the page. First of all, I remember this is now incremental static regeneration. I refresh once and it's not there. If I refresh again, it is there. Now, before when we did this, if we tried to go to this page, we got 404, but this time, hopefully, we'll get the fallback. And then after a very short amount of time, it should show us the data. So let's try it. Cook this. And we can see the data pretty much straight away. We didn't even see the fallback because it was that quick. But I promise you, the fallback would be there. And I'm going to demonstrate that by creating one more recipe. So let me go to content and add a recipe. Let me just call this blah, add the media, existing uh, skewers and skewers for this one as well. All right, 20 minutes for, oops, that's the ingredients. Let's just say tofu, whatever. 20 minutes for the cooking time, blah, for the recipe. Let's publish this. And what I'm gonna do is go directly this time to forward slash blah like this. I'm gonna press enter. And let's see if we see that fallback page. It might be too quick. Yep, very quickly. You saw it, right? If you didn't go back and preview again, <laughs> I promise you it was there. The fallback page was there until Next.js fetches the data. Then it pumps it into this. The next time we visit the page, we don't get the fallback at all because it's now generated this static page on the fly. So we don't need the fallback page next time. It's only for new data, right? So that's pretty cool. Now our content is almost live right for new pages it's pretty much live the only slight downside is that we have to hit a page first of all for incremental static regeneration so the very first visitor after you change the content might not necessarily see the new content so i guess it depends on how important that is to you to kind of weigh up which method to choose 
You can do a complete redeploy and rebuild manually if the first person to view the website must see the new content. That's entirely your choice. Now again, we still have one problem here. If I try to view some kind of recipe, which we know doesn't exist on Contentful, so, oops, we need to say forward slash recipes, first of all, then any old slug. If I try to do this, right, and then press enter, we see this fallback page. And in the background, Next is trying to fetch this data, but it doesn't exist. We know it doesn't exist on Contentful. Now, if I'm a user of a website like this, I'm going to be sitting here twiddling my thumbs thinking, wow, this website is really slow to load this data. And I don't know that the data doesn't exist. So in this case, when the data doesn't exist, I want to redirect the user maybe to the home page or something like that. So they're not just sitting around twiddling their thumbs. And we'll see how to do that next.